Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and in this video we're going to talk about dot plots. A dot plot, sometimes called a line plot, is a visual way to organize the data by showing the frequency of the data. A dot plot is simply a number line labeled from the least value to the greatest value in the data set. Each dot represents one piece of data. So if we look at our example here, the runs scored, the number line represents the number of runs. Each dot represents how many times that number of runs was scored. So five runs, this is five right here, only happened one time because there's one dot. But three runs scored happened one, two, three times because there are three dots above the three. So the number of runs scored is represented on the number line. How many times that happened is represented by the dots above the numbers on the number line. Okay, the bubblegum challenge. We're actually, it's been done for you. So I just made up one. This is our dot plot. And there's things that you can find from the dot plot, information you can find. The first thing you can find is the mean. And remember, to find the mean, we add them up and then divide. Well, how do we add up all these dots? Well, you have to remember that each dot represents the number that's on the number line. So this dot represents a zero. Okay, this dot represents a two. This dot represents a three, and since there are three dots, that means there are three threes. We have one dot for the four, so we only need one four. This is a five, and there are two dots, so we would need two fives, and so on. So you can list them out, and then add them up and divide, or there's a little bit shortcut of a way of doing this. Okay, there's one zero, so the total is just zero. There's one two, so the total is two. There are one, two, three threes. Each one represents a three, so three, six, nine. There's one four. Two fives make 10. If each one of these is five, they add up to 10. There's one six. There are one, two, three, seven. So seven plus seven plus seven would be 21. There's one eight, one 10, and then we have an outlier way over here, which is a 20. And then you would just add them up. Zero plus two is two, plus nine is 11, plus four is 15, plus 10 is 25, 31, so 31 plus 21 is 52, plus eight is going to be a 60, plus 10 is 70, plus 20 is 90. So the total is 90. And now we need to divide. Divide by how many dots there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And 90 divided by 15 is 6. So the mean is going to be 6. You can also find the median. To find the median, just count the dots from left to right until you find the middle value. So let me erase some of this. A couple of different ways you can do this. You can cross them off. Low, high, 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 and you're left with this dot right here, which is at five. So the median would be five. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to count. How many dots are there? Well, we counted them earlier and there were 15 dots. So let's split our data into half. 15 divided by two, two goes into 15 seven whole times. So that means we're gonna need seven on the lower half and seven data on the upper half. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's my lower data, my upper data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is my upper data. And that leaves me this piece right here by itself in the middle. And that again is five. So that's another way. 
And now let's find the range. Okay, to find the range, you just subtract high minus low. The highest number is 20. The lowest number is zero. Now it's not the highest number on the number line and the lowest number on the number line. It's the highest data piece and the lowest data piece. And 20 minus zero is 20, so the range is 20. And there's one other thing that this didn't ask that I wanna go over, and that is the mode. Which one appears the most? Well, that's gonna be the one that has the tallest column of dots, or the most dots. And you can see that three has three dots, and seven also has three dots. So there are two modes, three and seven. We can also describe the shape and distribution of the data using the line plot. So talk about the clusters. We know that clusters are data that are grouped close together. And we do have a cluster. We have a cluster from zero to seven. Are there any gaps? Sure. There's a gap from basically eight to 10. This is a gap because there is no data. There are no dots. Do we have any peaks? Peak is your mode. There's a peak at two because it's the tallest column, the tallest row of dots. Is it shape symmetric or is it skewed? Well, draw your outline around the data and which direction is the tail going? The tail's going to the right, so it's skewed right. Most of the data is down on the left side. What about the variability? Is there a lot of variability? Well, we're talking about runs scored, and we're going from zero runs to 11 runs. You know, for a, a baseball game, assuming this is a baseball or softball game, that's a pretty, 11 is a pretty high scoring game. So I would say, because we're talking about a baseball game and the number of home runs, I would say that this has probably got some variability to it. Because most of the baseball games that I've watched anyway, um, a team only scores like three to five, every once in a while like a seven. Not a lot of games do I see where the score's over 10. Again, variability is going to depend really on the subject matter that you're talking about. Okay, so let's just go through and let's answer these questions. This dot plot shows the prices of cowboy hats. So the price, the actual dollar amount, is the number line. The dots represent the number of hats that cost that amount. So how many hats cost $30? There's two dots, so that's two hats. How many hats cost $60? Well, here's our $60, but there are no dots, so zero hats cost $60. All right, find the median mode and range of the data. All right, the mode is the easiest. This is the one that's the most. Which one is the most? Which one has the most dots above it? the $50, so the mode would be $50. The range is how spread out your data is, so it's gonna be the high minus the low. Now again, the high is not the largest number on the number line, the high is the largest dot, $75. And the lowest would be the $30. So subtract the two, 75 minus 35 equals 45. And now let's find the median. What does median mean? The middle. So I'm gonna make this easy, I'm gonna count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There are 16 pieces of data, and I wanna split it into half. That's gonna give me eight. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this right here represents the, the bottom half, the minimum. And then the top eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, make sure I counted right. This is the upper half of the data. So where do you see the middle falling in? Because there is no middle dot here. So the middle really falls halfway between the 40 and 45. So we can add those up, 40 plus 45 is gonna give us 85, and then find the mean, divide. 85 divided by two is going to be 42.5. So the median would be 42.5. 42.5.
$42.50. Okay, did you get how I did that? Let me review it one more time just in case. So to find the median, I want to find the middle dollar amount or the middle data piece. So what I did was I counted how many pieces of data there were, there were 16, and I want to split it into half. And it goes equally, divides equally into eights. So the lower eight dots represent the lower half of my data. The higher eight dots represent the upper half of our data. And you can see that there's no dot in the middle. So we have to find out what value would be in the middle. We have to find the mean of the two, the mean of 40 and 45. So if you add them together, 40 plus 45 is 85. Divide by two, because there are two pieces of data, you get 42.5, and that is the median. Are there any outliers? Remember, outliers are pieces of data that are way smaller or way larger than the rest of the data, and there actually is. There's an outlier at 75. So because there is an outlier, do you remember what would describe the center better, the mean or the median? The answer is the median. Remember, the mean is the average. You have to add all of the numbers up. So you can see we want the center of the data. All of these numbers are close together, all except for this one way out here. So when we add this number, it's going to make our total larger. But there's not no other data out here, is there? Okay, so that kind of messes with your average. So the mean is not the measure center we would want to use to describe this data because of the outlier. We would use the median. Let's describe the shape. Let me clear off some stuff here. Okay, I'm going to draw my outline. I know it's not symmetric. There's a tail. The tail goes to the right. So the shape would be skewed to the right. And what percentage of the cowboy hats were $30? Wow, what percentage? We have to think back, think back, percent, percent. What do we know about, about a percent? Ah, a percent is always out of 100. All right, so how many dots do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have 16 dots, but we want to know that are 30. How many of those dots are 30? Two. Two sixteenths. Oh, what does that simplify to? It simplifies to one eighth, right? And we want to change this to a percent. Now, this is one you should know one eighth. What is one eighth as a percent? If you don't remember, think about the special scale factor. What can you multiply eight by to make a hundred? Oh, yeah, 125, right? So eight times 125 gives you 100, actually gives you 1,000. One times 125 gives you 125. So 125 thousandths. I'm going to do some work up here. Do your DP to go from decimal to percent. Move that decimal over two places. One, two, and it becomes 12.5%. Oh, yep, you can find percents using our percent information from graphs. So percents will never go away. They're always there. Okay, so I'd like for you to go ahead and pause the video and answer these on your own. When you have your answers, come back and check to see how you did. Okay, how many times did the team score six runs? Did you get four times? Remember, the number of runs is down here on the number line. We want to know how many times the six was scored, so that's represented by the number of dots, which is four. What is the median number of runs scored? Median means the middle, so which dot is in the middle? Did you get five runs? Five is in the middle. What is the peak? The peak means which one occurs the most or which is the tallest. And the tallest is the five. And what do you think? Is the data asymmetric, skewed right or skewed left? Well, if I draw my outline, it looks to be 
It's not symmetric, we know that, but it looks to be skewed to the left. There's more of a tail going this direction. All right, and you are ready for your independent practice. Go ahead, complete this, and come back and check.